Welcome to part two in probing using Fusion 360. So strap in, we're gonna be probing even deeper into this topic. So in this video, we're gonna start off with probing our Z-level surface and some things we need to look out for. Then we're gonna move into probing for our operation one. And then we're gonna move into some tricks we can use when probing for setup two. So let's get started. Okay, so Z-level probing. There's only one little thing you gotta work out, uh, look out for here. Uh, for instance, on this, that selection can be used for a Z-level probe or it can be used for a rectangular boss. One thing changes, and that is this Z-surface zero, right? Because when you're doing the Z-surface, you want to probe on the zero. That's what you want. But if you are probing the X and Y boss, well, then it needs to offset that so it can probe the side of the part. But as soon as you update this to maybe 2.5, then when you go back and say, well, I'm going to duplicate this operation again, this probing routine, once you've changed that height, it does not go back. So if you duplicate it and say, now I need another Z-level routine, well, look, it's a quarter of an inch. It didn't update automatically. You can see it diving down into the part, which isn't good. That means he thinks he's going to probe this surface thinks he probes this surface and then offset it up to the work coordinate offset, which is bad. You don't want to do that. And so once you do this, even if you change this back to 0.0, .0 which will work, it'll get you the results you want. And then you go back and you change it to rectangular. Notice, notice he's, he didn't change the height. Once you take control of this, it's yours. The only other thing you can do is either delete this operation or go to your three dots and then say reset to user default, in which case it would go ahead and give you that option where it would start changing that again. But that's something you want to watch out for when you're, you're getting in a hurry and you're doing a lot of copy and pasting and duplicating. Okay, so let's say that, uh, you know, we probe off of Z and it works good, but we need to open up the tolerance of this channel. It, it was just a little small. And so our initial probing, uh, if we put this part back in, it would have nothing to probe on, right? You probably run into this. Now, there's a couple of ways we can fix it. One, we can update the height so that it probes below that feature. But another thing we can do that's really simple is just say, use selection point. We'd want to unselect these surfaces, select the surface where it can probe, where the material is, and then you can probe that material without having to adjust your height. Okay, so how could your probe save you from your setups, right? In case you, uh, you don't want to bust a tool and you want to limit the amount of scrap rate you have, uh, maybe you're running something on second shift or you have a new saw guy, uh, probing can really help you out in making sure that uh, you get the best possible results every time from your setup. Because, and a lot of times when you leave the machine set up for someone else, you're kind of relying on this, an X stop or say, hey, you know, I want this stock to line up with the end of the jaw. So you put a block up there and bump the stock up, or you put, you know, a contraption up there to do an X stop. The only problem with that is as the saw cuts can vary, it either can be too long maybe too short, right? Maybe maybe they just left the end of the bar a little long. Like they could have spun it around and cut a quarter inch off to make it the right size, or they could just throw it in the box and go home for the day, and they leave that stock too long. Or maybe it's just, it comes up a little short. And even though you had plenty of stock on this side, uh, you didn't have enough stock programmed on this side, and so you don't make your part. You scrap that piece of material. Well. Instead of using just like a rigid X uh, stop, right? Just, just probing or locating off one side of that material, it'd be better, and you know, it only takes about a seven seconds more, 10 seconds more, to go ahead and probe both sides. That way, it probes both sides, it sets the work coordinate offset in the center, uh, regardless if that material is just a little long or a little short, so instead of taking all the, 
all the error on the right side of that part, all the error here, that that, if that thing was a quarter inch too long, instead of taking all that error, it's divided up. And if it was 20,000 short or 50,000 short, well, it'd only be 25,000 short per side, and then you'd still be able to, uh, to deal with that uh, compensation, and you'd still be able to cut that part. And so that's a nice way, particularly if you've got big saw cut blocks, or if you have a big plasma cut block, and you know, they're rough on each side. If you have a big plasma cut block, you can literally just kind of set, you can just, just touch off on the top here, and then it compensates, it finds the center of X and finds the center of Y. It keeps your cutter load even all the way around for every part. And so next time you leave something set up for second shift, you don't have to worry about coming back to a bunch of scrap. Okay, programming for setup two. Now, setup one's pretty easy if we take a look at it, right? You're just, you're, you're setting up program one, you know, setup one, and then when you're done, you've got this block of material that you're using to hold in the vise. Right? That's most likely scenario. Setup two is gonna be different because now we're flipping over that part we're gonna to try to get rid of that material, right? But in the meantime, we can't probe down here on the finished part. Now we could on the Y axis, or if we set up an X stop, but I'm only running four of these things, so I ain't got time for that. Uh, take me 15 minutes to set that up. Or I could do this in 30 seconds, right? So I, I could probe on these holes, but that is in the stock. That is not uh, something I've modeled. And so I can't really probe off of them unless I select this to probe on or this, and then I raise that up to where the stock would be. Uh, so I could do that. Uh, but the easiest thing to do is just probe the raw stock. Now I've already probed my Z on the parallels. In this instance, it wasn't the top of the parallels, it was just the bed of the vise. And that got me my Z, so I don't have to worry about that. So the first thing I do is I probe uh, where the center of the raw stock is again, and then I rough or climb cut this operation so there's no burrs. Then I face mill him, and now I know my Z is accurate, and I've got so much overage here that he could be a little off. It's not going to cause a problem. But before I do any chamfering, or if there was any holes or features, I would make sure that I probe this side again, right? But this time in relation to the finished part, I do the X and I do the Y in some fashion. Now in the Y here, what I've done is because this thing's held in a vise and he's two inches tall, which is about the height of my jaws, so I needed to probe on the side where the vise wasn't. So I, so I did the use selection point, and I selected this point. So now he comes in and probes and doesn't collide with the vise. Always good when you're probing. Then he comes out and does the chamfer because he gets a pretty good 45 degree there, and then he chamfers all the other positions as well, and any other features would all relate. Now, the only other problem that you could run into here is if you were trying to probe and a chip got in the way. And so one thing you can do, a simple fix to make sure that you've got an opportunity to verify that, is you can go to Setup and then go to Manual NC. You don't want a comment. You want an M0 stop. M0 stop. Okay. And then you just drag that up right after that face mill. So he's going to come out and face him. That tool is going to come up to whatever that clearance level is. You can look in there and then see if he left any chips, blast it off if need be, and then you can boop, probe, probe, and then do all your finishing operations. Okay. So that does it for part two of our probing series. If there's something you would like to see, make sure you comment below because we could still maybe fit it in in the next video. Uh, it's definitely worth subscribing for because we're going to be talking about probing those irregular surfaces as well as using the probing in the program to measure critical features and making sure that that number shows up on your Haas controller. So you definitely don't want to miss it. Again, we appreciate you watching it and we'll catch you next time.